Hey, it's Dave from CG Shortcuts. Today, we're going to do this. We're making a Christmas snow globe with dynamic snow in Cinema 4D and RealFlow. Firstly, my apologies for not posting a video in ages. We've been super busy putting the finishing touches on our new Octane Lighting and Rendering Masterclass, where we finally show you exactly how to get great looking renders in Octane. It should be out just after Christmas, and I'll post some info about it on the website today if you'd like to check that out. Also, there's still a week left to enter our final art challenge of 2020. The theme is snow, and you can win some epic CG prizes. All the details are also on our website at cgshortcuts.com forward slash snow. All right, I know we did a snow globe tutorial last year as well, but so many people asked how to do this kind of effect by Roger Kilimanjaro including Mohammed Al Fata, who I think was the first to ask way back in December last year. So this one's for you, Mohammed. If you haven't checked out Roger Kilimanjaro stuff, he's done some really amazing work. So I'll put a link down below to his Instagram page. And you can definitely do this kind of effect without plugins, but as people have been also asking for real flow tutorials, we thought this might be a good time to show what it can do. Plus we got a way faster and much better result using the plugin. So without further ado, let's head over to Cinema 4D and see if we can make this effect. Okay, so I've already got some basic animation in this scene. So let's just hit play and take a look at that. Our snow globe spins into place, then the glass bubble lands on top. And I've just used some MoGraph fracture objects with a delay effector to add a bit of bounce to the animation. And you can download this setup in the project file or make your own animation. But you will notice that I haven't added the movement where the snow globe slides off screen just yet, because we're actually going to do this after we simulate the snow. And I'll explain why when we get to that part. But for now, let's just pause this. And I actually want to cache this animation, so we don't have any extra calculations taking place when we go to sim in RealFlow. So let's grab one of the fracture objects, and we'll right click and head over to MoGraph tags, and we'll slap on a MoGraph cache tag. Then we want one of these on the other fracture object as well. So we'll hold control and drag over a copy. Then we'll select both of those. And down here, we'll cache out a range of frames. And you can see our scene is 120 frames long. So we wanna make sure we cache everything out till there. So we'll put 120 in here as well. And we want that to happen to both tags. So yes to this. And the caching was super quick. And we can now scrub through the timeline nice and fast. So let's pick a frame where everything comes to rest, about there, and we'll start our snowball simulation. So we'll head over to the real flow menu, and under emitters, we want something snowball shaped. So I think a sphere will probably be a good option. And now we've got our full real flow set up in here. And if we switch the camera view and have a look in here, we might actually hide a lot of this stuff so it's not so distracting. And here's our giant RealFlow logo and our spherical emitter. And if we play this, we get a load of particles emitted in every direction from that sphere, which is not quite what we want. We actually wanna fill that sphere with particles to form one big solid snowball. And before we do that, let's grab our RealFlow scene here. And if we head over to display, we can turn that giant logo off, but we'll keep the info visible which will let us keep an eye on our particle count, which will be pretty important later on. Okay, so now we'll grab that emitter and we'll just enable the base animation of our snow globe. And if we rewind this, we want the emitter to be the size of the snowball. But if we play that and zoom in a tad, I think a snowball this size might be a tad too big. So in the object tab of the emitter, let's just reduce the width of that sphere to something like 80 centimeters. And we want it to drop down. So we'll move it up here. And we wanna make sure it's out of the view of the camera. And that looks good. Let's rewind and switch to the right view. And I just wanna make sure it's not too close to the glass lid. So let's make that visible again. We just wanna keep some distance between these so they don't interfere with each other when we go to do the simulation. So we'll just play that forward a bit. And I think that's a good distance for the snowball to fall. So let's go back here. And rather than emitting from the sphere, let's just zoom out here. We want these particles to fill the sphere. 
So over in the emission tab, we just need to enable fill sphere. And we'll try that. But they're still shooting out there. And I think that's because we need to reduce the speed. So the particles stay inside the sphere. And we'll try that. And now those particles are contained inside that sphere. All right, so now we need some gravity to pull our snowball down. So we need to bring in a force. So we'll head back to the real flow menu and forces in real flow are actually called demons. And we've got quite a selection of different forces we can apply to this. And we'll actually use a few of these guys. So let's just snap that menu off here. And we'll start by bringing in a gravity demon to add gravity to the scene. Then we'll also need a drag demon to adjust how the snowball moves through the air. And finally, we'll take a surface tension, which we can use to make our snowball behave a bit more like snow rather than liquid. So let's see what that gives us with all these forces at their default settings. All right, so it's dropping down. So we know the gravity is working now, but it dropped straight through the base of the snow globe. So now is probably a good time to add some collisions to have our particles interacting with our animated objects. So we'll grab the base fracture object and we'll right click real flow tags. And we actually want to give this a volume tag. And if we look at the options in that tag, we can increase the collision geometry detail, which is how close to the actual geometry our sim is going to be calculated. So it's kind of like an accuracy control. And I find bringing this up to medium high works well. And we'll also copy this to the glass dome. Then to make these collision objects, we need to do the same thing, but this time we'll also add a collider tag. And if you've done rigid body dynamics in Cinema 4D, these options might look familiar. We can adjust the collision distance, for example, but we might just leave these on the defaults for now. But I will disable auto mode and make sure the collisions are continuously calculated. Then we can raise the friction to 0.3 so the snow doesn't slip and slide too much. And we'll bring the bounce up to one to make it a bit bouncier when the snowball collides with that surface. And we'll just play this back so we can check the collision is working. And that's looking good. And I love how fast this kind of thing calculates in real flow. So we need collisions on the glass as well. So let's copy that collision tag onto that as well. And we'll make a few tweaks to that tag on this guy. Let's bring the collision distance up a tad. And I don't think we need friction or bounce on the glass. So we'll set those to zero. And let's see what that gives us. Okay, I think that's a good start, but our snowball doesn't have a whole lot of volume right now. And you can see we only have 502 particles in here. So let's rewind this and we can increase the particle count over here in the fluid object. But first let's change the type of fluid so it doesn't behave too much like liquid. Granular is a good one to try for snow, but it can be a little bit tricky to control. So for this particular tutorial, let's go with viscous instead, which will give us a thicker looking liquid. And now we can increase the particle count with the resolution setting here. Let's make this 40 and we'll rewind this so it can update. And you can now see we have over 10,000 particles here now. So if we play that, it will start to simulate a bit slower, but we're starting to get some good snow-like clumping going on when it collides with that geometry. And we'll fine tune this in just a second, but first we want this simulation to start after the base of our snow globe has moved into place. But at the moment, it starts falling down straight away from the first frame. So let's disable the emitter for a second so we can scrub through the timeline. And about frame 16 is where the base gets into position. So we can actually keyframe the fill sphere setting. If we turn this off and set a keyframe on frame 16, we can then go ahead one frame and have this turn on and set another keyframe. And now if we rewind and just make sure we enable the emitter, and also to speed up the calculation, we can go into the scene object here and over to the solver tab. If you've got a decent GPU, you can actually take advantage of that in real flow by enabling this. We've just got a GTX 970 in this machine, but it should make our sim quite a bit faster. Let's give that a go. And that is happening much faster. Okay, let's have a look through the camera again. And we'll just make a few tweaks to the fluid. Let's leave all these settings on their defaults, but we can decrease the viscosity to make our snow less viscous or less runny. 
if we bring this down to 0.2, that should thicken things up a bit. So let's try that. And that's definitely looking thicker and filling up that space a bit more. And some of that snow is being chopped off when the dome comes down. So the collisions are working fine on that as well. Okay, I'm happy with the sim now. So let's grab a frame where the snow has settled a bit and we'll hide the dome for a second. We now want to turn these particles into a mesh, which is super easy to do in RealFlow. We just need to go back here and bring in a mesher. And that guy will appear over here. And if we go and check out the settings all the way down the bottom here, we can reveal that mesh by enabling the auto build. And our snow mesh is looking a bit thick for my liking. So let's take a look at the other options over here. We can change the topology here, which is currently set to triangles. And if we just show the lines by hitting N, then B on the keyboard, that's what the triangulated mesh looks like. But we've also got the option to use quads, but I find triangles tend to give us a more organic look. So let's just go with that. Then we could try increasing the resolution to capture a bit more of that detail, like so, which might be a bit easier to see if we turn the lines off again. So we capture more of that lumpy surface. Then we've got the radius, which is how far from the original particles our mesh is formed. So if we bring this down, the mesh will be tighter on those particles, which can give us a bit more detail and make the snow less thick. But it's probably a bit too lumpy now, but we can smooth it out with the next option here. Let's just bring this up to two. That's better. Then we can remove the thinning to bring back some volume. And we'll try relaxing this as well by bringing this value down a tad, which didn't actually have too much of an effect. But I think we're looking pretty close to the example now. So let's finish this up by caching our sim. Let's just hide our mesher for a second and rewind. Then we'll grab our real flow scene. And to make sure we don't get any weird errors or mesh intersecting, I like to increase the sub steps by disabling auto parameters and bringing the min and max sub steps up to six. And we'll also enable subframes. And we'll do one last check. And everything looks good to me. So over to the cache tab, we just need to pick a cache directory, which I've already set up here. Then we'd better turn the mesher back on again. And now we can hit cache simulation. And we'll let it do its thing. And it might take a few minutes, but I'll speed this up for the tutorial. Okay. And now we should be able to play that back nice and fast. All right, let's make the dome visible again. And all that's left to do is animate the snow globe off screen. So we'll just go to a frame after the dome comes down about there. And we're going to animate this off in the Z axis. And we can actually close this now maybe just one more frame forward. Then we'll grab our glass dome and head over to the coordinates tab and set a keyframe on the Z axis. And the same for the base, we'll set another keyframe in Z. We'll also need to animate the snow mesh. So we'll grab the mesher and do the same thing on that. All right, then we need to go to the last frame and switch to the top view. We just need to move these back in the Z axis until they're out of the camera frame. Let's try 420 centimeters. And that looks about far enough and it's out of view. So we'll keyframe that and do the same thing to the other objects. Okay. But you will notice the particles have been left behind, but we've cached the mesh now, so we don't need to worry about these guys. So let's just hide them from view. And now if we play that, we've got our looping snowball animation. And I prefer to do that final animation after caching the sim, so that last move doesn't affect our simulation and make the snow go all over the place. So that's about it for this tutorial. As usual, you can download the project file below to save a bit of time, and you can get the full Octane Render Ready project files for this and all of our tutorials on our Patreon page. Big thanks to this month's patrons. You guys are the best, and there's no way we could make all of these tutorials without your support. Cheers, guys. This is going to be our last video of 2020, so I hope you all have a great Christmas, New Year's, and all of that stuff. It definitely has been a crazy year, but we've got some big plans for 2021. So take care and keep creating cool stuff, and we'll see you in January. Thanks for watching. 
Let me know what you want to see in the comment section down below, or you can leave a like or dislike. And don't forget to subscribe and click on that little bell icon for more videos and free stuff. There's loads of extra resources on our website and you can win epic CG prizes in our monthly challenges. Check out cgshortcuts.com for more details. Catch you next time.